What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down three different wide receiver press releases that we think all wide receivers should know. So I hope this video helps you guys out, but also fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you want to learn all of the on-field drills you should be doing for route running, press releases, your hands, balance, explosiveness, the works, check out that very first link in the description below for our eight-week wide receiver on-field workout schedule. It's 200 plus wide receiver drills mapped out in a daily schedule with sets, reps, and we give you a video example of each exercise. So check out that very first link below. If interested, fellas, let's get started. So this first release here is I call this kind of like a kick step four step release. So this is the route there. This is the release Cooper Cup ran to seal the deal in the Super Bowl. So main thing I want to talk about here is why he decides to kick behind his front foot with his back leg. What's the purpose of this? And what are we trying to do here? So obviously situation is he's running a goal line fade. So we got inside shade coverage. He's got this kind of like catch technique, if you will, about two two to three yards off. So obviously if I'm running a goal line fade, the mistake that a lot of wide receivers will make is they'll line up and they'll just go run to the back corner. They'll think, oh, I'm just going to go run. Quarterback's going to get it up quick and I'm going to go win this jump ball. Not only do we have to give the quarterback time to, you know, get set, get his feet set, but also I want to leave him enough space for him to leave me. I got to attack this DB's leverage. I have to threaten him where he doesn't want me to go which can move him off his platform, and that could create some space. This DB's lined up inside shade for a reason, wants to prevent the slant. So if I could threaten him with the slant, that just will create more space for me back to the outside. It's all about space. When you have a talented quarterback, it's all about giving him space. So Cooper Cup, the first step of this release is you take your back foot and you step behind your front foot. Now, I know a lot of people hate on this movement because they'll say, oh, you never want your feet crossed because if this DB jams, you're going to be off balance, which is probably 100% true. If he does jam, but notice how when Cooper Cup decides to go with this move, there is about two to three yards of space between him and the DB. That is when you would want to do this. The whole purpose of this step is to load your hips and to get your feet inside of your frame. Because when your feet can be inside of your frame, you can really push and sell this crossover. So like I said, the footwork is you step right with behind, you plant with the left, now your feet are underneath you. And then we go right into the right-left crossover. So it's kick behind, gather step, right-left. So when your feet are underneath you like so, that right-left can really sell. You have a lot of explosion with those two steps. You could really throw your hip, throw your upper body into it to actually get that DB to bite to the inside and sit. Now, one thing that Cooper Cut maybe could have done a little bit better on this release is close the gap a little bit more. When he does this release, he's kind of leaving a big space between the two of them, which gives this DB an easier time to recover. If he maybe can get into his cushion a little bit more, threaten inside, that DB can jump and we could get him by a step rather than having him hip to hip. But that's the whole purpose of this release. That kick step behind and that back step, like that kick step right here and that gather step are to close space with the DB then the crossover is to sell the slant. Just another way that you guys can attack the leverage of a DB when he's inside shape. Now, since this is a goal line fade, obviously the tempo of it is slowed down a little bit. He kind of slows things down with the first two steps and then he throws the crossover. Now, what if you're in open field? What if you have to run like a deep fade? Let's say you have to run like a comeback and you want to decide to go with this type of release, you would just quicken up the tempo. That kick step that he takes behind him right here would be a little bit faster and the tempo of the crossover would be faster. There are different speeds for this type of release and that is what we want to try to accomplish. So let's play this thing again full speed. Great release for you guys to use when you want to attack a DB's leverage when he's about two to three off. I only like the kick behind when he's about two to three off so I'm not susceptible to that jam. Let's play this thing full speed. Great job by Cooper Cup getting his feet set under his frame so he could sell inside and create space for the QB to give him a good ball. All right, so now this next release here kind of builds off of the last release, and this is going to be what I call a square up release or a hesitation hop, as some people like to say. So you see Devontae Adams do this a lot, Justin Jefferson, um, Keenan Allen's a great example of this, but essentially it's another one where you can attack this DB's leverage when he's about two to five yards off. Okay, so this is the other one where you wouldn't kick step, I guess you could say. So let's play this full speed. So this wide receiver pushes off the back foot, reaches with the front foot, and then is able to run this whip. So there are a couple different things you could do off of this. So the main thing I want to focus on is the mechanics of these first two steps. How do we actually hesitate, but also attack this DB's leverage, attack his midline, and threaten him? And that's from pushing off of your back foot, 
reaching with your front foot. So you see how he takes a step with the back foot. So many people have this hesitation hop wrong. They try to do this portion of the release where he hops at him, but what they'll do is they'll essentially just like jump. They'll pick both feet out of the ground and just jump at the guy. And that's going to make you slow. Your feet are not in the grass. Your cleats are not in the grass. There's no suddenness to the movement, which isn't going to get that reaction out of the DB. You got to have balance, but you also got to have explosion. So that's what that step does. So he takes that step with the back foot. He's pushing off of it and reaching with the front foot. You push and reach because that is how you guys can gain ground and hesitate. Now, in this situation, when you push and reach, you can do a couple different things. He decides to cross his face and then run this whip route. What you could do is you could do the same exact thing, give a crossover fake inside, get the DB to jump and then go run a fade. You could attack him like so, give him a crossover and run a slant if you, if you so desire, like if he's in head up press. But that hesitation hop, that square up release starts with pushing off the back foot, reaching with the front foot. That is the key right there, fellas. You want to square this guy up and be patient when we do so. Let's play this thing again full speed, and then we will get to one more release that you guys can learn. So he pushes off the back, reach with the front, and that can set up a lot of things, and that can close the space with the DB, which we know is always a good thing to do. Now, if you want to maybe one more last thing, if you want to gain maybe a little bit more ground than this, push a little bit harder off the back foot. You push off of it and try to really reach with that front foot and that'll help you gain more ground, okay, fellas? So that's that square up or hesitation hop release and the mechanics behind it. So now, last release I wanna talk about is something called a split release. So a split release, when do you wanna use it? How do you use it? What's the mechanics for it? So this split release I would use when I have, I personally, you could use it. The great part about this split is you could use it against inside press, head up press, or outside shade press. I could use it against any of those. That's why I like this because this release, you come to balance. I personally, when I teach my receivers and I coach them up, I teach them to use this when it's head up because it's a great way to get a read on the DB and see how he's going to play you and be in a position to react. So let's watch it full speed. So Antonio Brown was master of this when he played. Great job splitting and hesitating, getting that DB to stop his feet, reading the DB, and then finishing on this catch. Might have been a little bit of a push off there, but you know, obviously we're receivers, we're not gonna call it. So split release, it's exactly how it sounds. You're literally splitting your feet. So your front foot, so in this case, Antonio Brown's left foot, is going to go outward, so his foot's going to go out, and his back foot is not going to go out. It's going to just go up, so it'll come up even with his front foot. So your left foot goes out, right foot goes up. You're not thinking splitting your feet like this because you're going to end up getting too wide. Left foot goes out, front foot goes up. Now, when we get to this position right here, some people might say Antonio Brown's base is too wide. I don't think it is because if this DB were to get hands and you're in this position, you're going to be way better off than when your feet are super close together inside of your frame. Because you think about it like this. Don't know how many of you guys surf or, you know, ride a skateboard or whatever it is. But when you're on a surfboard or your feet close together, no, because you'll fall off the dang wave. You have a pretty decently wide base. That is why. So you have some balance and we stay in an explosive position. So back front foot goes out, back foot goes up. We keep a knee bend and we keep a strong base. That is the key. Now on this split release, again, I'm going to talk about when you want to use this and how you can use it as a reaction. But when you use this split release, we're talking about mechanics first. The mistake a lot of guys will make also is they'll come off the line and they will pop up. They will expose their number. They'll come off. They'll expose their number. Their chest will raise up. And guess what that DB is going to do? Get hands and jam. So we have to make sure, almost think of it like there's a small door underneath your head and you don't want to pop up and hit the door. You want to stay underneath the door and in low explosive position with a strong base. That's the mechanics of the release. Front foot goes out, back foot comes up. And there's a little bit of a hesitation element to this that can get this DB to freeze and force him to react, which is why I like this against head up press. Because when you got a DB who's in head up press, we don't essentially know like what leverage he's trying to keep. You could do this split release and then he could jump way outside. He could react outside. So what would you do? You take the inside release because that's why you split your feet. When you split your feet like that, you're in a balanced position where you could push off of this foot and go inside or push off of this foot and go outside. You could go either way because you have the correct mechanics. You're in a strong balanced base. Both cleats are in the grass. Both cleats are even. So you could push in, you could push out. Because what if this DB goes here and he shades inside? Push off the left foot, let's go get up into the route. What if I split, he keeps it inside, 
and then I go to the outside and he jumps. Okay, I could just put my cleat in the ground and go. I'm coming to a pos- I'm getting to a position of balance so I can read and so I can react off of this guy. In this case, he shades to the inside. So what does AB do? He takes the outside release and he's able to go. There's a hesitation element and there's a reaction element to that split release, which is why I love it against head up press. Could you use it against inside shade? Sure. You would hesitate. You can maybe give a little head fake. Like let's go back and say pre-snap, this DB was inside shade. You could do the exact same split release that Antonio Brown does, but you could give like a head and shoulder fake inside to threaten his leverage and then take the outside release. So split release, fellas, that's the third. I believe every wide receiver should have that in their toolbox just so they can use it when they see that head up press. That's when I like it. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time. Great job by AB hitting that split release, being able to restack and win on that fade ball. Maybe a slight push, but overall great release. All right, fellas, really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If um, you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to uh, leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. Always great hearing from you guys. And again, fellas, if you would like a full eight-week wide receiver on-field workout schedule, daily wide receiver drills with sets, reps mapped out for you, check out that very first link in the description below. I'll see you guys next time.